glad you're here with me today. I want to share with you from Mark chapter four, and we want to see what we can find. And uh, what we have in Mark chapter four is the parable of the sower. And Jesus uh, repeats the parable. He tells the crowd about it, and then he gives an explanation. So I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to read the where he's telling the crowd. But when Jesus tells this uh, parable of the sower, he is revealing Satan's determination to steal the word of God from gaining an entrance into the hearts of men. And he also shows the different conditions or the different different hardness of man's heart. So we realize that, and to me, this, this is a revelation that God wants to bless, he wants to heal, he wants to deliver, he wants to bring the kingdom of God into your lives and in the lives of others, but Satan is constantly trying to steal the word. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and so we've got to realize that Satan is trying to steal the word, to steal the blessing. But also we've got to realize that we've got to keep a, a heart that's pliable. And we also have to realize that sometimes people are not receiving the gospel because of the condition of their heart. And so we've got to, uh, that gives us an opportunity to pray that God would do things to uh, maybe open their eyes and soften their hearts. But anyway, so let's uh, let's begin in um, in chapter. Well, we're in chapter chapter four, but in verse. Uh, let's begin in verse ten. It says, "When he was alone, he he had already." Uh, he had already shared the parable of the sower. It says, uh, and when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable. And I think that this is a key that, that you need to grab a hold of is when you hear the word of God, if you don't understand it, say, Lord, reveal to me what you're trying to tell me. Reveal to me what you're trying to say in the scripture, because sometimes we'll either put our own interpretation on or we'll try to put somebody else's interpretation on it. But we want to know, we want to get it from the heart of the spirit, what, what the scripture is trying to say. And so Jesus says this, he says, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to those who are outside... Uh, all things come in parables, okay? To you, to you, to those of you that are curious, to those of you that want to know what the Word of God's saying, to those of you that are in the family of God. And remember, Satan comes to steal the Word, and so it's not God trying to keep the Word from people. It's the, it's the enemy that's trying to blind people, steal the word from them. God's not willing that any should perish, so he wants all to receive the scripture. He says, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And let me just say that, what is the kingdom of God? It's those who hear and obey. That's what the kingdom of God... The kingdom of God is hearing the word of God, obeying the word of God, and seeing, seeing the manifestation of what God wants to bring into the earth because we're hearing the word of God and we're obeying it. He said, but to those who are outside, to those that don't want to hear, to those that don't want to obey, all things come in parables. He says See, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Is God hiding the word? No. Satan comes to steal the word, and we'll see that. He says in verse 13, 
And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? And how will you understand all parables? The sower sows the word. Now, ultimately, Jesus is the sower of the word. And the word of God, uh, the seed is the word of God. But Jesus sowed the original seed, but he has called you also to share the word of God. He's called you to share the testimony. He's called you to share what God's done for you. He's called you to share the great things the Lord has done for you. And you can also share the scripture and how it affected your life. The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside. Wayside is a hardened pathway where the word is sown. Let me just say this. When the sower, back in those days, they had a bag of seed, and they would just reach in, grab a handful of seed, and just sling it. And it would fall wherever the seed fell. That's where it fell. And so the wayside was where people walked. It was like almost like walking on a concrete. It, the seed would fell, fell there. It says uh, the wayside where the word was sown. Uh, when they hear, Satan comes immediately to take the word that was sown in their heart. So that's a hard heart. The word falls on the hard heart, but Satan comes to take the word from the hard heart. And likewise, or in the same manner, are the ones uh, sown on the stony ground. When they, when they hear the word of God, they immediately receive it with gladness. So it's not their heart isn't as hard as the, as the wayside, but it's stony. They receive it with gladness. The wayside, it just fell. It, did, they, it didn't move them at all. But on, the, but on the stony ground, they received it. Woo! Man, this is good stuff. It says, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only a time. Afterwards, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. A couple of things I want to point out here. They receive it with gladness, but they only endure, it only endures for a time. Why does it endure for a time? Because persecution comes. And I there was a neat thing in the scripture there. It said, did you notice it arose because of the word? It's nothing personal against you. Satan knows the power of the word in your life. So if he can get you to reject the word through trouble, through persecution, your family might say, why are you believing that for? Why are you going to that church? Why, why are you praying all the time? Why are you reading your Bible? And then you don't want you don't want to you don't want to receive that persecution, so you lay it down. You know why are you praying all the time? You want to stay with it because if you stay with it, then the word of God is going to grow. It's going to prosper. It's going to produce the fruit. It's going to produce the fruit that you got excited about when you heard it. But. Is God causing the persecution? Is God causing the trouble? No. It's Satan who comes to steal the word. Thank you, Lord. It says in verse 18, says, Now these are the ones sown among thorns. And notice it is the same seed. It is the same seed. Thank you, Jesus. It's not one, it's not an inferior seed. All the seed is high quality. It's all, every seed will produce what it's called to produce if it's sown in the right soil. These are the ones sown among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, 
so they hear it. It says, And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So this heart is a little more sensitive to the word. It's a little more sensitive to the word. It received the word, but, but thorns start growing up. Weeds start growing up. What are the weeds? The weeds are the cares of this life. And you know what? We all got cares. We all got cares. What does he say? He says, um, he says, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust for, for other things. What's the deceitfulness of riches? It's where I desire riches, the riches of the world more than I desire the things of God. You know? You know, we all need money. And our God will supply our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But we have got to give the word of God priority in our life. And in the King James Bible, it uses the word the lust for other things. You know, I've gotten to the place now, you know, all through, through the years, you're just gathering, gathering. You're getting things. You're getting things. But I'm at the place now where I want to give some things away. You know, why do I keep these things around? I want to give some things away. I want to bless other people. I want to have some room to move around. You know, the things that we desire today, they become a hindrance for us. To, they become a hindrance tomorrow. You know, they might be in the way. But the reality is, it was the condition of the heart, and so Satan puts the cares of this world, the cares of this world. You know, even the, even the political uh, thing can get your mind, can get your mind off of the Word of God. Hey, I, I'm going to still hear, and I'm going to still vote, but yet I'm not going to allow that to, to dominate my thinking. I want to be, I want the word of God and the spirit of God to dominate my thinking. And then he goes on. Ah, let's see what he says here. He says uh, in verse 20, but, but these are the ones sown on good ground who hear the word and accept it. That's a heart that's willing to receive God's word and they're not going to let it go. Have you ever uh, have you ever uh, played with a dog, and uh, you got a, a towel or a dish rag, and they're biting on one end, and you're pulling out on the other? That dog, he won't. That dog will not let go. Well, that's the way you and I need to be. We're not going to let go of the Word of God. We are not going to give it up. We're going to we're going to be so totally focused on the Word of God that we're not going to let Satan. Come and steal it. He says, but these are the ones sown on good ground. They hear the word of God and they bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. 30, 60, and 100 fold. You know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. God, if you'll accept the word of God and you'll hold on to it, God is going to see that you bear fruit. You know, and at first it might start out, you only, you only get 30-fold, but stay faithful. You might move up to 60. Stay faithful. You might be one of those that, man, every time you hear the Word of God, every time you hear the Word of God, every time you hear a promise, man, that promise is fulfilled in your life. And then Jesus goes on to say, in verse 21, he says, is a lamp brought and put under a basket? Now, Remember, Jesus said, he's not shifting the subject. He says, as a lamp brought and put under a basket uh, or under a bed, is it not set on a lampstand? All right, what was he talking about in the previous parable? He's talking about the word. Well, doesn't say, doesn't the scripture say in the Psalms, thy word is a lamp unto my feet? and a light 
unto my path. What does the word do? It illuminates the darkness so that you're not stumbling. It illuminates, you know, and sometimes treasures are hidden in the dark. You turn on the light and you can see the treasures that you can pick up. You turn on the light and you won't stub your toe on the bedpost. You know, sometimes I have to get up in the middle of the night and my wife's in bed and so I can't turn on the light. I'd sure love to. Sometimes I'll go out and get a, get a flashlight and I'll put my hand over the lens so that it doesn't light up the whole room. If I need to go in and get something out of my, get a pair of socks or something like that, I'll go in and I'll, I need some light. You don't need a whole lot of light because all you need, but the word of God is a light that will reveal the treasures. The word of God is a light that will keep you from stubbing your toe. The word of God is a light that will reveal the blessing that God wants you to have. The word of God is a light that will show you the path that you are to walk in. Some people say, well, you know, I used to be on the path. I used to be on the right path. Well, did you get away from the word of God? Did you, did you stop listening to the word of God? Because the word of God will illuminate the path, the right path and keep you on the path that you should be on, hallelujah. So he goes on to say, he says, for there's nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor anything kept secret that should not come to light. If anyone has an ear to hear, let him hear. Then he said, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to him who hears, more will be given. He hasn't left the word of God. The word of God still the seed. What are you doing with the seed that's being planted in your heart? If you grab a hold of that word, if you're the good seed, if you got the tender heart, if you got the humble attitude, you receive the word of God, you hear it, you obey it, and then if you if you obey it and you hear it, then more will be given. If you're resisting the word of God, why would God want to keep giving you the word? I, I might have said this before, but there was a, a guy I grew up with then, went through grade school with, through high school. Became a, uh, I became a minister, and he said to me, I ran into him you know, years after I, I moved to Pennsylvania. I'm from Kansas City. And he said, uh, you know what? He said, I don't go to church because you preachers keep saying the same thing over and over again. And I said, well, when you do the first sermon, then I'll get to the next one. You know, and that's the way God is. Why would God want to keep giving you more that you would be responsible for to him? Much is given, much is required. So God gives you. Some people say, well, you know, God, God's not speaking to me anymore. Well, go back and do, go back to the last thing he told you that you didn't do and start from there. And you become obedient to that. And then God will give you more. See, because again, he says, take heed what you hear with the same measure you use. It will be measured. It will be measured to you. And you who hear more will be given. Not just hear, but obey. He says, for whoever has to him, more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Is God taking the word away? No, God's not taking the word away. Well, let's go back to the original, to the original parable. Satan comes immediately to steal the word. God's not taking the word from you. The enemy's coming and taking the word from you. God wants to bless you with the word. Hallelujah. Open your heart. Receive it. Verse 26. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and he should sleep by night and, uh, by night and, rise, and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. 
Well, I just don't understand how this works, Pastor. Plant the word. You don't need to know. You say, I don't understand this confessing. You plant the word and you water the word. I'm not much of a farmer. I mean, I know, I know the general thing. You plant the seed in the ground, you cover it up and you water the seed. You don't drown it, but you water it. And then eventually because of the sun and because of what the earth does, it causes that plant to grow and it will produce a, a crop. It will produce a fruit. Do you understand everything? No, you don't need to understand. You just plant the seed. Plant the seed. When you plant the seed, more will be given and more benefit will come your way. He says, for the earth yields its crop. The earth yields crops by itself. Who does? You do? No, the earth does. You plant the seed and the earth does the trick. It says, first the blade, then the head, uh, that the full grain in the head. And when the grain ripens, immediately you put in the sickle because the harvest has come. Some people are just so impatient. Well, man, I planted the word a week ago. I don't want to, I don't want to discourage you, but how long did Abraham have to wait for his promise to come? So sometime, you know, depending on Depending on the, the promise depends on how long the seed has to grow. Do you know that some plants, I used to love to plant beans because man, in a few days, they'd be up. They'd be, I just love to see it. But you know what? If you planted an oak tree, if you planted an oak tree, you would, ha you would have to wait a long time. And you would have to wait for years and years for it to come to, to a full tree. Man, we like, those, uh, we like those quick beans. We like the quick promises. But you know what? If you want to sow a destiny, it might take some time. If you want to sow something that is of real value, it might take some time. But don't give up on it. Don't throw it out because God is going to bring it to pass. Okay? So we wait for the harvest. Well, let's go on to verse 30. He says, and he said, to what then shall we liken the kingdom of God or show what parable shall we liken it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the ground is smaller than all the seeds in the earth. But when it grows, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shoots up out of the uh, shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. A couple of things here we want to see, we want to find out is the mustard we're not looking necessarily at the size of the mustard seed. We're looking at the quality of the mustard seed. You know there's other seeds that are small but they grow weeds. They grow other plants of no value. But see, he planted the mustard seed, and when it grew, it grew into a huge plant. Some of you might, if you're an animal rights lover, you might not like this. But you know, not every scripture in the Bible about birds is positive. We know that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. So the eagle in this particular passage has a positive result. And the scripture also talks about, you know, I carried you on eagle's wings. Positive. But ask the baker of, the, of Pharaoh what he thought about birds. He had a vision of, of three baskets on his head, and these birds came and ate all the bread in the baskets. Well, Joseph interpreted that, and it was a negative thing. Pharaoh's going to put you, impale you on a pole, and the birds of the air are going to come and pluck you to pieces. That wasn't too positive about those birds. Well, uh, in the parable of the sower, 
the uh, the word the word fell on the wayside. What came? The birds. The birds came and they ate they they ate the seed. When you plant the mustard seed, it grows up into a large plant. But the birds come and they they not only nest, but they pick at the plant. You know, the birds are always trying to pick at the kingdom of God. You know that Satan is always trying to pick at, even though it's there, he know he can't stop it. It's there, but he tries to pick, pick, pick. Has the enemy ever tried to pick at the kingdom of God in your life? Has God ever told you something and you got, you got a word from the Lord? You read it in the Bible and you're excited about that word, but Satan comes and picks, picks, picks. He says, you can't do that. You can't do that. Don't you realize that you're not educated? Don't you realize that the people aren't going to respect you? It's not, it's not what people respect. It's who God respects. And if God gave you a word, then he's going to empower it. And that's not you anyway. He just said the sower sows the word. So you get a word and you give it. And then let the word do its power. Let the word produce the fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what are we going to do now? So uh, let's go to verse 33. He says, and with many such parables, he spoke a word to them and as, as they were able to hear it as they were able to hear it. Do you know Jesus said before he, before he died on the cross and he, uh, and he was resurrected, he said, I have many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them. Do you know that uh, the condition of our heart or the condition of our mindset, if I think I know, it's hard for me to minister to people that know it all. It's hard for me to minister to people that think they know it all. If you think you are, you know, God might have a revelation he wants to give you, but because you're so set in your mind, he can't give it to you because you're set in your ways. He says, he spoke many things unto them as they were able to hear it. You know what? I got it. When I, I was raised a Southern Baptist and I was taught a certain way of viewing the scriptures. But you know what? When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came upon me and the scripture says this, it says that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He will remind you of all things that I said and, and show you things to come. He will teach you all things. When I received the Holy Spirit, then I began to understand the scriptures more than I ever did. And sometimes, well, you say, well, you know, I've been filled with the Spirit. Are you asking the Holy Spirit to show you more? More, more. God has more. You will never exhaust all that God has for you. He's got more. So keep asking for more. So he goes on to say, but without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to them. You know what? When you hear the message, wherever you hear it from, when you get alone with Jesus, say, Jesus, what do you have from that for me? And he's going to speak to you, the Holy Spirit. Well, let's go to verse 35. He says, it says in verse 35, on the same day when the evening had come, he said, let us cross over to the other side. Now let's relate this to the parable of the sower. Jesus said, when the sower sows the word, immediately Satan comes to steal the word. Jesus gives them a word. He said, let's go to the other side. The word of God speaks to the disciples and said, let's go to the other side. It says, now when they had left the multitude, they took him alone into the boat as he was. 
and other little boats were with him, and a great storm arose. And the waves beat into the ship, and so it was already filled. But he was in the stern, in the back of the boat, asleep on a pillow. You know what? When you minister, they say that minister, uh, when you preach a sermon, it's like doing an eight-hour job. Some people say, well, all he does is preach once on set. No, no, it's more to that because you have to prepare for and besides you have other things. But he had preached all day. So he was tired. He was in the back of the boat. Now, I don't know how he could sleep through a rainstorm if I got wet. But anyway, that's just a thought. But Jesus spoke a word to them and Satan came immediately to steal it. He came immediately. He sent that windstorm. You say, well, you say, no, that was God. God wasn't trying to kill his son. God wasn't trying to kill his disciples. The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. It says in verse 38, it says, but he was in the stern, in the back, on a pillow, and they awoke him, and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? That is a sermon in itself. Most of the time, when you're in unbelief, it's because you don't believe that God cares for you. You've lost, be, you've lost that loving feeling because of what's going around. Of what's going on around you. you? Think God doesn't love you? God has never lost His love for you. Just remember that. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But then he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Well, there's a couple of things there. He spoke the word to them, so that word could have carried them across. Jesus, hey, the storm's here, but Jesus said we're going to the other side. So we're going to get there. Another thing, we've got the Son of God with us. He's here with us. He said we're going to the other side. Let's just keep the peace of God on the inside of us. Jesus was able to get up and rebuke the wind and the sea because he had peace in him. He didn't say stop. He said, peace, be. He said, peace, be still. When you have peace in you, you can speak peace to the storm. You say, well, you know, I tried that. I, I remember one time, my brother, I'd just gotten out of Bible school, faith school. My brother said, I've got this catamaran. Let's go out to the lake. It's supposed to rain, but let's go out to the lake. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know if you know this, but a catamaran has a has a metal has a metal sail that holds up the sail, and you're on a lake. That's a lightning rod. But you know what? We we decided we were going to go anyway because we were going to have faith that it was. But you know what? We got out there, and our better senses took over. So we're not getting out there. You know what? Jesus didn't give us a word, go out and catamaran. But he gave those disciples a word and said, let's get in the boat, let's go to the other side. Even if it seems like Jesus is asleep in the boat, Jesus is with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So be at peace in knowing that Jesus is with you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you, Jesus said he would never leave us nor forsake us. So in Jesus' name, I pray that the Holy Spirit would bring to remembrance that word so that when trials and tests come their way, that they won't say, don't you care, Lord? No, they're going to say, Lord, you promised us a word, and so we're going to believe you. You're with us, so we know that you're going to take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Be strong in faith. In Jesus' name, amen.